According to Money Watch, computer chip industry is about to explode in the U.S. Every year, we become more dependent on advanced computer chips for all kinds of things in all kinds of ways. About 90% of them are made in East Asia, which is why when the pandemic disrupted the supply chain, we all felt the pain. But the United States has embarked on an urgent mission to change that. David Pope tells us about the players and the stakes. As you come on to the page, kindly hit the like bell and don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so as yet. Thank you. you probably realize that there are computer chips in your computer and in your phone. But you may not realize just how many other things in your life rely on chips, like your clocks, and your speakers, and your toys, and every single thing in your kitchen. Actually, trust me on that one. Our demand for silicon chips is only going to grow as we find new ways to make new devices smarter. Chris Miller teaches at Tufts University's Fletcher School and is the author of a book about the chip industry published by our sister company, Simon & Schuster. It's true. Over the last 30 years, the world has put almost all of its silicon eggs into one basket. Together, we define the future. A single company called TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. It's now the world's biggest chip maker. Doesn't that mean our entire economy is a sitting duck? Well, it's, a, it's an extraordinary risk. We learned that the hard way during the pandemic. As people started working from home, they bought new PCs. Companies started upgrading their data center infrastructure, and chip companies struggled to keep up. A limited supply of sedans and SUVs is driving prices sky high. The reason was the chip shortage. A typical car contains hundreds of chips. Just a single delayed component could cause a car to sit in the factory floor unfinished for weeks or even months as they waited for the chips they needed. But pandemics aren't the only threat to our chip supply. The biggest risk is geopolitics. As tensions between China and Taiwan escalate, there's more and more concern that China could try to disrupt chip supplies out of Taiwan by blockading the island or even attacking. The economic impact would be felt over many years and the cost would be measured in the trillions of dollars. Since the 90s, America's share of global chip making has dropped from 37% to 12%. Today, American companies like Apple, AMD, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm design their own chips, but they all hire TSMC to make them. TSMC even makes some of the chips for Intel, the American company that pioneered the semiconductor. The number one driver was government policies. Al Thompson runs government affairs for Intel. He says that the East Asian chip industry flourished thanks to financial help from their governments. It really provided an attractive incentive for, for companies to do more manufacturing in, in East Asia. So now we're in a pickle. Pandemics natural disasters or geopolitics could disrupt our supply of chips at any time. Why doesn't our government do something? Well, the future of the chip industry is going to be made in America. The Chips Act is a law developed by the Trump administration and signed into law by, by President Biden last August. And I would dare you to find an issue that had the support from two different presidential administrations and two Congresses that passed with bipartisan margins. The CHIPS Act could be a huge deal for America, both for our economy and for our national security. It includes $13 billion for research and development, $39 billion for building new plants, and about $24 billion in tax credits to attract private investors. As Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger puts it, this is the most significant piece of industrial policy legislation since World War II. If it works, this act will spark an American chip-making boom in massive fabrication plants called FABs, 
like the two that Intel is building in Arizona, totaling 650,000 square feet. Now, to just put that in perspective, that's like six large, you know, football fields. Kayvon Esfarjani is Intel's global operations director. So how much does it cost per fab? About. It's a little over $20 billion. Is it accurate to say that some of that money came from the CHIPS Act? Well, will come? that's absolutely our expectation. Okay. okay, there you go. Thank you. One reason fabs are so expensive, they contain some of the most sophisticated equipment on Earth. I have to say, I've never felt more dustproof. <laughs> the air here is a thousand times cleaner than a surgical room. An eyelash, a speck of dust, or even the wrong color light could ruin these delicate silicon wafers. They basically get cut up and then you put them on a chip and then you send them to customers all around the world. The smaller you etch the circuitry, the faster the chip. There are billions of transistors into each one of these chips. Hundreds of billions of transistors. How thin are those layers? Oh, they're at the angstrom levels. Like, like atoms? Uh, uh, that's right, at the atom level. The people who work on these, they must get terrible eye strain. <laughs> now, the CHIPS Act isn't popular with everyone. One reason is the fine print. For example, to receive the government's money, a semiconductor company must promise to pay its employees a market wage and offer child care. You have to turn your company into a social welfare operation. You have to join this brave new world, whether you like it or not. But Intel's Kayvon Nesvergani says that tech companies have to offer good pay and child care anyway if they want to attract talent. None of this bothers us. In fact, if anything, it's very aligned to how we operate. We want to create an environment that it is very enticing, where we are going to grow the talent. For author Chris Miller, the bigger concern is that $52 billion won't be enough. I think the CHIPS Act is an important turning point, but it's... On, a, on its own, it's not going to be enough to revolutionize the chip industry or to dramatically reduce uh, our dependence on chips manufactured in Taiwan. But no matter what the critics say, an American fab building boom is underway. Intel has broken ground on what could eventually be eight immense factories on 2,000 acres in Ohio. In fact, with the prospect of grants from the CHIPS Act, 14 companies have either announced or broken ground on 22 new chip factories in America, including two more in Arizona, being built by our old friends from Taiwan, TSMC. Altogether, that's $160 billion of spending and 28,000 new American jobs, not even counting the boom in suppliers, housing, and infrastructure around each plant. We have a really amazing opportunity as a country to basically regain that manufacturing share in partnership with the U.S. government in a way we've never seen before. TSMC is located in Taiwan. According to Wikipedia, it is the world's second most valuable semiconductor company, the world's largest dedicated independent semiconductor foundry, and its country's largest company, with headquarters and main operations located in the Xinchu Science Park in Xinchu, Taiwan. According to RAYPCB, TSMC is the largest semiconductor chip manufacturer. This company produces about 90% of high-performance chips across the globe. Also, it controls over 50% of the global semiconductor foundry market in terms of revenue. As you leave the page, don't forget to hit the like bell and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so as yet. Thank you for watching.